all right, I'll be honest, I've been struggling on how to start this video. In fact, I've been struggling on how to shoot this entire video, and for two reasons. We're gonna talk about CF Moto's Hunt the Wolf 2019, and, and a racer literally died during, during this event, and I wanna be respectful of that and, and them as a person, but I also want to be able to, to talk about that and talk about the event and, and show respect to all the riders that worked very hard to, to make it there and then to complete, as you're going to see in some of these videos, some really grueling days. Hey, do you want to stay up to date on the latest ATV trails, reviews, and news? Obviously you do. So hit that subscribe button and that bell notification so you don't miss our future videos. All right, so April 8th, 2019, this race starts off with a bang as all four classes start at the exact same time from the exact same place. Now, let me just say up front, we're gonna focus primarily on the extreme class because if we were to focus on all the classes and discuss them all, this video would be extremely long. So for the purpose of this, we're gonna focus mainly on the extreme class. And as we kind of pan the line up here as they're all getting on the starting line, they're all lined up by how they placed in the time trials. And what's crazy is you'll notice the first row is all Can-Ams except for one Grizzly. Wait, is that is that right? Wow, that's uh, that's really gonna give the Renegade lovers some some ammo on that one. So, as the clock hits, these riders all take off, head down the track, and as you can see, they're gonna start by just twisting around, and, and once they really get a little bit down the trail is where the classes start to separate. So I love this shot because it's a great representation of some of the terrain that the riders are dealing with, and it also shows that these, these really are unmarked trails in the extreme class. All they have to go off of is the GPS that, that they were given with the track. So if they don't follow that, they're, they're pretty much screwed, and it's gonna cost them big time, especially if they realize it later on and have to turn back, which does in fact happen. And this is a perfect shot to represent that because they were going too far and they realized it and had to turn back. I mean, look where like that number one guy right now is riding. There's no track there. He's He's got to figure that out on his own. And if you're right behind him, you know, you can at least judge off of him, presuming he's going the right way. But it's just a great shot showing how these guys really do have to find their way. And if they're too far off, they get penalized for that. So that's just an awesome aspect to this race. Now, as you watch this footage, we're gonna jump to the end of day one soon. But first, let me just say thank you to Hunt the Wolf because this is all footage that they provided me. I wasn't there, so we weren't able to capture our own footage. But they, they were kind enough to provide us with this footage. But with that, let's go ahead and jump to the finish line for day one because I really think this was the highlight for the day. And this is a true representation of CF Moto and the, the uniqueness of this race, okay? Because as we watch this footage here, you are seeing the first two individuals head towards the finish line, one right after the other. So as we can see here, one rider is gonna go to the left and the other rider is gonna go to the right. Now, when you split off from the person in front of you, you have to wonder if you're making the right decision or not. Because again, remember, they're only following their GPS and they're within like a couple hundred meters of the finish line at this point. So this could cost them, and in this case, it does. That first rider who was in first place went the wrong way. So the rider in second, who is Steve Atkins, actually finished day one as the winner by a couple seconds because he managed to take the right turn in this situation. All right, so let's go ahead and pull up the leaderboard real quick so you can take a look at the day one finishers. As we just mentioned, number one for the day is Steve Atkins from the United Kingdom. And then for day number two, and I'm sorry, throughout this video, I'm gonna butcher these names, I apologize up front, is uh, Radu Lungu from Romania. And as you look at their place times, the number two came in five seconds behind. So had he have not made that wrong turn, he would have placed number one for the day. All right, so day number two starts off with a brief, and I bring that up specifically because the organizer wanted to bring everybody together and remind them that this is an open track. So if you get pulled over by the police, you gotta deal with that. If you're going down the trail and there's a bunch of cows in your way, you got to deal with that. And he went on to tell people that if you don't like that, maybe it's not the race for you. And he drove that home by saying, We are not on a closed circuit. If you don't like the kind of racing, don't come here. Well, nothing is reserved for you. All right, so after the brief ends, everybody gets lined up and we take off for day two. And it doesn't take more than a few seconds until somebody falls off their machine. Now, thankfully he was fine, he got back on and continued the race. And one of the big obstacles of the day to highlight and that the riders are gonna hit not too far down the trail is called Hotel Hill. Now, as we wait for the first few riders to show up here, one thing to remember is 
things are steeper in real life than they appear on camera. If you've never recorded anything on a hill like this before, it truly is much steeper than the camera lets on. Now, I also wanna mention real quick, a lot of this video is recorded live, which is why it's a little, you know, the quality's not so good. They were trying to bring it to us live, which is great, but obviously that, that changes the quality of the video just a hair. All right, so here come the first two riders, and they climb up, and then you'll notice this, boom! It just nails that jump and keeps on cruising. Kudos to that Can-Am right there. Next guy waited a little bit to give the guy some time. Boom! Nails that hill and continues up as well. And again, this is a steep climb. I and mean, you can see him struggling right there to continue up as his wheels are slipping. This is a steep climb. And these guys are just nailing it, especially that real steep part that's causing them to jump up. This is just entertaining to watch these guys. I mean, they're just, again, like no fear, no hesitation. They're just rocking it. Again, if you can imagine in real life how much steeper it actually is than when you're there. In fact, this next video is another steep hill climb, and I think this is gonna do a better job representing it. So if we check this one out, we'll show some random clips from this one, because I think this will help drive home some of the steepness in these hills too, right? So as we watch this machine here try and come up this hill, I mean, you could just see them struggling. And look at the lean on the people just trying to stay upright. And that thing just, nothing. And as you'll notice here, there's already one machine trying to winch up the rest of this hill. That's how steep it is. This guy's paused. Let's scoot ahead a little bit here. They're now trying to winch on and look at look at how much this guy is leaned in as he's trying to pull this winch cable out I mean that's this is clearly a very steep hill You know it's steep when you actually have to get your winch cable out and winch yourself up because it's not like they're stuck Their machines aren't in some deep mud or anything like that They're having to winch out because it is that steep and it's just sliding on the dirt crazy All right, so as we watch this guy try and winch up you can still see the struggle as he's trying to use his tires and winch up just struggling, super steep. The winch is working, he's got those tires working and he's still just spinning as he's trying to get up this hill one inch at a time. All right, so let's move to the finish line because I'm really just trying to cover a couple highlights from each day so this video doesn't get too long. So as we head to the finish line on day two, you'll see again, two racers neck and neck coming across the finish line, out of the river, and boom, there they are. Now coming in first place is Mendegas Lelis from Lithuania, followed by Steve Atkins from the United Kingdom. So first on day one, second on day two. This guy is just crushing it. And again, this is a total game changer because the guy that just came in first, he came in seventh on day one. And that just goes to show you how much this race can actually change from day to day. And the, the rider that came in second on day one, only because he made that wrong turn, did not even finish day two. He's out of the race. So this just goes to show you how much this race actually changes from day to day. You could be first on day one, first on day two, and then day three hits, you're out of the race. Just like that. It's just so much changes every single day. Now, as we head into day three, this is actually going to be the last day for these riders. It's not supposed to be but because of what's gonna happen, they cut the race short. Now, as we head to the start line here, this is gonna be another 50 kilometer day for the extreme class. So our first highlight for day three is a steep descent down a hill. And, and you'll notice right off the bat as this first machine comes by, there's no one other than Steve Adkins. This dude is crushing it on this race. Day three, partway through, and he's still in first place. I mean, this dude is just rocking it. All right, so as we go back to the video, so as we zoom around here, wait for the second rider. You can see him up in the wood line there. Boom, right past the spot he's supposed to be. He drove right past it. And again, this just goes to show you anything can change on this because he's eventually going to make his way back to where we are now. So he's going to come from another trail and they're actually going to help him out here a little bit. They, they actually tell him. Are you sure? Check your GPS. So he checks his GPS realizes he actually missed the spot he was supposed to come from so he actually turns around and goes back because if he doesn't the time penalty from continuing on is actually much worse than if he just takes a couple minutes backtracks finds the right path and comes down the hill from there now as he's trying to backtrack we'll see the second rider of the day come through so who was number third just gained a ton because that number two man screwed up so he's going to come through in the meantime the number three man's going to come up and around come down the right way and then let's go ahead and catch up with those riders a little bit later down the trail. All right, so here's all three of those riders, one behind the other. As you can see, they're, they're closed in on each other pretty well at this point, trying to make it through some pretty rough terrain. And as we zoom in a little bit here, you'll see Steve Adkins still in first place, still crushing it. But this tree here is going to set these guys apart a little bit. Steve manages to get... Oh, oh, oh! He managed to get over it, though. That was, that was close. Tilted her a little sideways, but he's pulling through. 
he's uh he's struggling he's struggling but he pulls through and he's ah just like that again handled that extremely well remember it is hard to see how big and what these obstacles are actually like versus when you're there on the ground so as we watch the second rider here this guy is struggling on this tree he's having a real hard time I mean, back and forth, constantly trying to get over it, trying different methods, and he's just not having a whole lot of luck. And the crappy part is if you're the guy behind him, you're pretty much just stuck waiting. But in this case, in this type of race, he's going to get off and actually help him. And yeah, it's beneficial because he needs to get by as well, but he could still try and wait it out and look for different avenues to get around, but he doesn't. He's going to get off his machine. They're going to work together to try and get over this hump. And we're just going to watch this for a minute because, you know, these guys are struggling. This is some serious terrain, and it's awesome to see not only them conquer this obstacle, but work together to get over it. I mean, it's just awesome there is no doubt they are struggling though you can see that that tree is just catching them right between the tires seems like every time come on man you can do it here we go here we go here we go oh all right so he's gonna try the winch go that method look at that even with the winch is still a struggle so he thinks he's over the obstacle gets his winch put away and sure enough he's not quite over the hump yet thankfully he is over it enough the next rider manages to help him out some and together they get that guy over this tree. I think one of the keys was getting that those front tires over that tree. That that obviously really helped a lot. Man, look at that. There he goes, there he goes. All right, but check this out now. So he gets through, right? What does he do? The right freaking thing. He pulls up like 20 feet or so, and then he goes back to the third rider, knowing that one, the guy helped him, and two, it was that big of a struggle for him. He's gonna go back and help the next guy in line. Rider number two gets behind him. They line it up. He's gonna try and bounce over it, but oh! Jeez, there he goes. I mean, he made it over. He made it over. That was rough. That was rough, but he made it over. They got through it. He gets back on his bike, and then they take off. All right, so we're going to go ahead and skip to the finish line. Unfortunately, I don't have any footage of the first couple of racers coming across the finish line, but I'm going to show you the scores, but I want to show you this first, and this here is actually an interview with a rider. All right, it's post day three, and he's in the top 10, and, and why are we talking about this? It, it's significant because right here, he's explaining how he's doing this with a 570. So most other racers have a much larger machine, right? A lot of the Renegades we're looking at are 1000s and all that. Well, this guy is discussing how using nothing more than a 570, he's able to not only conquer Hunt the Wolf, but come in in the top 10 in the extreme class. And I think that's really cool and really important for a couple reasons. And one, it goes to show you that a 570 is a very capable machine. I, I feel like we're in this time where, you know, you got to have like a, a 1000 if you want to be considered one of the big boys or or something like that. And, and it just goes to show that a 570 is still a very, very capable machine. And it also goes to show you that how you ride and your ability to ride goes a long way, right? And I think a lot of people understand that, but sometimes people get caught up in this bigger machine is better. And quite frankly, a better rider on a 570 goes further than an okay rider on a 1000. All right, so let's look at the scores real quick for day three here. As we can see, Steve Atkins came in first, led by Minge, Ming, Minge, Minde, Mindegas Lelis. Mind, I'm sorry, bro. Like I'm, I'm trying. I don't. I'm sorry. Uh, from Lithuania, Mindangus. I'm going with Mindangus from Lithuania, and then came in third is Frederick Bach. Now, now, these ended up being the final results for the race, and that's because on day three in the crossover class, Katie Hodgson died during the event, and we're gonna talk more about that. But first, they had a memorial for her. I want to play a few seconds of it. One, because it's really cool that they did this. And two, just out of respect for her. So here's that. That's awesome. I mean, that's super cool that they got together and that they did that for her. But man, what a what a horrible thing to have happen. And I think it's a reminder how dangerous some of these events actually are, right? I mean, it's like we all know that, but I don't think anybody really goes into this type of event like I could actually die during this. Like I might get hurt, yeah, but but die. I just I don't think a lot of us think about that as much. And this just goes to show you that that it happens, right? It's it's an extremely dangerous 
thing. While it might be awesome, and, and Katie may have died doing exactly what she loved, it's, it's still unfortunate. It's still a terrible and tragic thing when someone dies during something like this. Now, what actually happened, again, I wasn't there, and I don't want to speculate too much because I just don't, I don't fully know, right? But from my understanding, what, what happened was Katie was traversing a very steep hill and ended up coming off the front of her machine and it rolled over on top of her and ended up crushing her. So I'll just go ahead and leave it at that. Again, I just think it serves as a great reminder how dangerous this hobby can actually be, especially on these type of crazy events. And, and my thoughts go out to, to the family of Katie and, and all those involved. Again, super tragic thing. It's just terrible. I don't know what else to say about it. I'm, I'm not real good with words like that, but, you know, it just sucks. So after this all happened, they took a vote, and, and I thought this was really cool that the race organizers did this. They, they basically left it up to a Democratic vote where everybody got to decide whether they were going to continue the race or just call it, stop it early, and announce the winners. And the majority voted to just call the race, stop it, and, uh, and announce the winners. So we'll go into that real quick here. But one thing I did want to mention is you're seeing the race organizer on stage right now, and, and he's just making a quick announcement. And he, he stated, and this kind of shocked me, that CF Moto, their title sponsor, pulled their sponsorship after all this happened. So we're still within like the first 24 hours of, of when Katie passed away, and CF Moto's already pulled their sponsorship. Now, again, I don't know if there's something else going on with the, with the race or the organizers or, or what, but I, I just thought that was crazy. And he also went on to state that if they don't find another title sponsor by, I believe, July, this race will not happen in 2020. All right, so let's go ahead and show the winners here real quick. Again, we're only talking about the extreme class. Coming in third is Frederick Bach. Now he came in third on day one, fourth on day two, and third again on day three, giving him the overall standings of third place winner. Frederick Bach is representing Sweden. Coming in second place is the man that I'm having such a hard time pronouncing his name, and that is Mindegas Lelis from Lithuania. Again, seventh on day one, first on day two, and second on day three, leading to an overall of second place. Now, coming in as the winner in the extreme class for CF Moto Hunt the Wolf 2019 is Steve Adkins. This guy crushed it out on the trails. First place day one, second place day two, and first place day three, leading to an overall victory for the 2019 CF Motos Hunt the Wolf. Now, I just want to say real quick, awesome job to all of these riders. These trails were intense. You can head over to Hunt the Wolf's Facebook page and literally watch like hours of footage. Uh, I did, and, and these trails are just, they're amazing. It takes skill no matter which class you were in, so kudos to all of them. Great job, even if they didn't finish, just for showing up and trying their hardest. Awesome job, way to go. That's all I got. Subscribe if you haven't already, and, and, I hope to see you on the trail.